Hey everybody, Mike here with EverythingAboutConcrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how we pour a 30 by 40 garage floor. And this floor has some slope in it. It slopes 3 inches from the back towards the front. And we're starting to pour this right at the front and we're going to work our way to the back because we got a little breezeway slab we're pouring back here also. So I'm going to show you how, just how we attack a floor like this, how we pour it. Now this is a about a four inch average for a floor. It had some spots in it that were five, but it's right around a four inch concrete floor. We've got a matter rebar in this, number four rebar tied two foot on center for reinforcement. And what we're using for concrete today is we're using a, a 3500 PSI with three quarter inch stone. And it's got, it actually has microfiber in it too. So we got a little bit of extra reinforcement and we use a what, what I call a water reducer some people call it a super plasticizer but what it does is, is the water reducer it's a chemical they add when they batch the concrete out and it allows you to pour a little bit of a looser slump without having to add more water so you don't weaken the concrete when you add too much water to the concrete and the concrete's too wet then that are, that's really going to weaken it and really increase your chances of you getting some uh, shrinkage cracks. So we use that water reducer every day. So we're getting this first truck poured out. We got two trucks here. This was around, uh, you know, about a 16-yard floor. With the breezeway, it made it right around 18. So we're getting this first nine yards dumped right out, and then that truck can wash out and get back to the, to the concrete plant. So what we do is we strike what we call a pad right here in the middle for our grade. And we have, a, we have a red chalk line snapped on the inside of the foundation that we mag our pad to for our outside pad. And then we use the, the wet pad in the middle to go off from. You can see Eric there on the left with the screed, how he's using that wet pad. Now I'm magging, you can see me right there on the right, magging a pad to the chalk line. And then I'm resetting my laser, my receiver on my laser, so I can shoot the correct level of pad in the middle of the floor. That way the, the floor slopes, has a nice even slope. Three, it slopes three inches from the back towards the front. So all my pads I shoot in the middle here are going to be slightly different. You can see how those guys kickscreed that using those pads to go by. And when you get a couple good rakers, I got Tia there raking and Luke raking, you know, that just makes screeding so much easier. So I'm I'm making another pad so those guys can finish out that bay, screeding that bay. And what I do is I just mag, you know, a, a, about a three foot by three foot area roughly, mag it smooth, and then I check it with the laser. And that's going to be the exact same height as the, the chalk line right right basically parallel with it over there on the concrete wall and once I get that pad in the center to where I want it then what I do is I put a little X in it like that with my mag and I put a circle around it and that tells everybody that that's that's to grade and then the guys can use that to strike off from so you just got to be careful when you strike off it that you you know you screed off it without digging into it obviously because you lower it and then without riding high on it so you leave we leave just a tiny little mark from the screed on the pad to know that we've we've scored we call that scored what do you guys call that when you screed when you when you leave a little mark on the pad or or, or how do you guys kick screed like us do you do you screed by yourself um, let me know how you guys screed down in the comments also we generally screed with two people like this on a, this is a 14 foot screed. So unless it's like eight feet or smaller, we'll screed by ourselves. But usually a, when we grab a 10 footer, a 12 footer, a 14 footer, we'll always have two guys on it and we kick screed like this. So it takes us, you know, that's probably about 17, 18 feet. Those guys are screeding out right there. That bay, I call that a bay. You know, it, it might take us 45 seconds to a minute to screed out a bay like that by hand like this. So that's that's really not too bad. 
Now, if you're not used to screeding like us, you know, if you've got to use uh, some other type of, of method to screed with, then it might take you a little bit longer. But on a day like today, you know, it was cloudy out this morning. It was about 65 degrees, so it wasn't too hot out. We, we didn't have to hurry too, too much to, to get this concrete down. So we got that first truck all dumped out and screeded. T is over there bull floating it. And then we got the second truck we pulled into the side. You can see I'm getting hot now. I gotta take my sweatshirt off. <laughs> uh, we pulled the second truck into the side and we had to hook a little chute on it to reach the other end. That just helps not, us not have to pull quite as much concrete. And we'll use those chutes. That's uh, about a 10 foot chute. You know, we got an eight footer, we got a 12 footer, we got a 16 footer. So the chutes just help us you know not have to pull as much concrete every day because when you pour concrete every day let's face it you get a little bit of you get a little bit of worn out by the end of the week so the less you have to pull that stuff around the better so those shoots you know we use those shoots all the time and that's all we did we just needed it to pour about six feet out and then now we can reach it with a truck we're using front dump trucks today too now, uh, for you guys that watch me a lot, you'll notice we don't we don't get to use front dumps very often. There's not too many here where we are. Usually, it's rear discharge trucks. So this was a little bit of a bonus for us. You know, as long as you got a good driver on that front dump that knows how to move that chute around and how much concrete to put in there, it's it does make your job easier. So we got Darren, you know, Darren's over there magging the edge. You can see he's magging to the chalk line. I'm making another wet pad in the middle so we have something to go by because, you know, that's more than 14 feet from where we stopped to the other end. So we got to shorten that up a little bit by screeding a pad there in the middle. There it is. That's perfect. I exit and circle it. And, and then we'll grab the screed, strike our pad. Luke's pouring out a little bit more concrete. So everybody's got a job. Eric's over there magging the edge. And I'm gonna grab the screed with Darren and we're gonna pull that down and Tia's gonna rake the concrete for us. So we're just keeping everything moving. From start to finish, you know, from the time we started to the time we finished this garage pouring it, it took us took us about 40 minutes to do this. You know, we're not without really hurrying. So just waiting for Eric to finish up magging that edge, give Darren something to go by, and then I'm going by the wet pad in the middle, and we'll get that bay screeded down, and then we'll set over and screed the other bay down. So this is the basic process, you know, you got to get your concrete poured out, get your, get your edges magged to grade, use whatever you're going to use in the middle for a grade, and then get the concrete screeded. You know, and if you can screed with a couple people, definitely pulling it from front to back like we are is going to be a little bit faster than trying to saw it back and forth. We've we've never sawed concrete back and forth with a screed. It's just not how we were taught. So we either kick screed like this, or we use a a power screed like you've seen seen us in some other videos. Out. I'll link a video at the end of, the, of this here to, to show you how, what we use for a power screed and how that might be an effective way for you to screed a floor. We typically don't power screed floors with, with like a vib vibrating type screed when we have a slope in it. We like, to, we like to do the ones that are sloped by hand. That way we know the concrete's not going to sag at all and we have our grades are right perfect. There's nothing worse than getting a, a low spot in a floor or even a, a hump in a floor. So you want to make sure when you screed that you're scoring and everything comes out just right. So, you know, the homeowner's happy in the end. We're going to get that last bay screeded. And for you guys that don't know me, you know, for you guys that are new watching, my name's Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors. We pour concrete pretty much every day. And this channel's all about concrete stuff so 
if you like that kind of stuff, you know, go to, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. If you want to learn how to do this, you know, I got some courses down in the description. I got some on concrete slabs. I got stamp concrete, uh, epoxy floors. And I also got, you know, if you want a more advanced type of learning, I got my private membership where I can coach you and mentor you. And I have other other more advanced trainings in there where you can learn how to do concrete, kind of like we do. So that's called the Concrete Underground. You can check that out down in the description below too. There's a link for that. We've been doing concrete, you know, I've been doing concrete for 40 years now. Um, Eric there, the one screening with me in the in the kind of the green shirt, he's been working for me for about, I don't know, 25 years. Darren there to the right for 25 years. Then Luke, Luke's been with me for about 20 years. So we've all been doing this for a long time and we've all been doing it together for a long time, which which makes it really nice. No one really needs to tell anybody what to do. <laughs> and that's that makes the job pretty easy, actually, for all of us. So T is finishing up bull float in that bay. All these tools we use, too, guys, the bull float, the rakes, the screeds, you know, the mag floats we use, all the tools we use are, are available down in the description below if you want to check them out. And that's basically, you know, how we pour a 30 by 40 garage slab that has a slope to it, a 3 inch slope. So it'll pitch any water that, that drips off the cars onto the concrete is going to run towards the doors and out the door. And then we're just going to finish up that little breezeway slab, screed that, bull float it out, and then we'll be done. We'll leave a couple guys here to power trial this today. So they'll get it all power trialed nice and smooth, and then they'll saw cut some expansion joints in it, contraction joints. And then this, this floor will be all done for today. So thanks again, guys. Come on back, watch another video, and we'll see you on the next one.